Hi there, my name is Jason Caldwell. I'm the lead developer for the S2 member plugin for WordPress. In this video, we're just going to cover a form question uh, that I just received. I think is very interesting. Uh, this, uh, this user writes in and says, I want to create a client portal area where users will have access to the whole site, but each user can, one, log into their own member's area where they will have, where they will uniquely have access to their own area which will contain PDFs. Is it possible to give or restrict access to what they can add on their own page? So for example, he, he says, client will go to training.php where they will see a client login, username, and password. They will enter this and then have access to their own area where no one else will have access to this. How would the user go about getting this client area details? Do you have to register? Do you have to pay? Or is this optional? And if you don't, what, would you have to charge? Can you do this? So in other words, what they're, what they're asking is, if it, is it possible to, uh, to tell S2 member that a specific page should only be uh, available to a specific user, where instead of granting level-wide access or just capability access where it's applied to many different users or to a whole entire level, can you restrict a page or a post to only a specific user and without going through S2 members specific post page access where, where you're making a transaction for a specific post or page. In other words, in this case, we want to have one page on the site for each particular user. Uh, one of the other uh, uses for this I've seen is some schools uh, will set up client portal areas as he's describing here where all accounts are created manually and then accounts are given out to, for example, each teacher and each teacher has a post or a page on the blog that has been assigned to them with content that was published by the site owner uh, where content is different for each of those different teachers. Uh, so this is a great question and I want to show you that this is possible with S2 member and kind of give you a, a walkthrough of how you would configure this to make this work because this is not how S2 member was intended to work by default. So in order to make this jive, uh, you have to go through uh, a little more advanced configuration. That's why I'm doing this video to kind of walk you through that. Okay, so I'm going to switch tabs here and go over to uh, S2 Member General Options Panel. And here where we see open registration free subscribers. Okay, one of the questions he's asking is, is it possible to have someone sign up for free without having to go through payment? And the answer to that is yes, that's already built into S2 Member. You just choose yes, allow open registration here. And then what you would do is there's a link here that's provided and you can just send, once you set this to yes, you can just send this link out and this will bring up the registration form uh, so that anyone can come here and go ahead and sign up. Now this label, I've just got this site in maintenance mode right now, but you, this registration will load up and you can even put in custom fields here uh, where you can collect certain information for each user. So this is the same form that a customer would see after checkout. Only if you open registration up, you as the site owner have the ability to link people directly to this form. So that's pretty simple. You just set this to yes. Uh, now, if you wanted to create accounts completely manually where you, users don't even have to sign themselves up, where you create the accounts uh, to match up with the content, then you can just do that by clicking on add a member right there in the S2 member menu panel. Or you could also just, this is the same thing, go here, here to users and choose add new. And then that would give you the ability just to create an account as the site administrator where you put it directly into the system. And with the latest release of S2 member uh, 3.2.1 plus, uh, you can also include, when you add the member, you can also include all custom fields and everything all at the same time. So that it's, it's even easier than ever now to do that. Okay, so once we've set up how we're going to put accounts into the system, now we need to establish how we're going to restrict content on a per user basis or on a per user matched up with a, a specific page or a post. And the way we do that is through the application of a login welcome page. And if you've watched any of the other videos that I've done, you're probably already familiar with a login welcome page. It's the first page a, a user will see whenever they log into the site. Okay, well there's an interesting thing here about the login welcome page configuration. You can either choose a page that you've created in WordPress which will be available here in this drop-down for you. Or you can use a special redirection URL where you just type in the URL itself. This could be off-site. It could be anywhere you wanted it to be. 
But in this situation, what we're going to look at is the replacement codes that are available for this URL. As you see here, I've put in current user login. And so I want to explain what, what this could actually be used for. Because this was originally implemented uh, with S2 member in order to match up with BuddyPress uh, to make it possible to redirect to BuddyPress generated pages that contained an ID or the username in the URL. But you could also use this to generate a client area like we were discussing in this video. So let's open up this replacement code box. This just pops up an alert and the one we're looking at right now is this current user login. And it tells us that that is a replacement code that will automatically be replaced with the current user's login, which is their username, and it'll always be in lowercase format. So if I put that replacement code here, then my login welcome page is now different for every person that has an account. So if I log in and my name is John Doe 223, then when I log in, S2 member is going to redirect me to a page on your site that has a slug which will read John Doe 223. Whatever the user's user name is, that's what the slug will be. Now, if you don't have that page on your site, then they'll end up on a 404 error where it's just not found. So that's not good. So in other words, in this, if you do this, you have to make sure that for every user that's in your system, you have a page created or a post created that matches up with their user login, their username. Otherwise, the user would log in and they'd hit an error page. Okay, but in this case, that's fine because we can do this for each user. Uh, if we're just doing a client area where we know that we're going to have a page already created that's got content on it for a specific user, and we want to make sure that that's where they go when they log in, then we can do this. We can just pop this in, and that way they're automatically redirected there. Okay, now this, however, does not protect that page against another user. So, for example, if, if my username is John Doe, that's fine, I'll be redirected to John Doe, but what happens if Mary Jane logs in? Well, if Mary Jane wanted to, she could type in John Doe, and she would still have access to John Doe's page because she's logged in. So that's not good. We need to make sure that we're protecting these pages as well on a per-user basis. So that's what we're going to take a look at next. And the way you accomplish that is whenever you create the page, if I go here to my Pages menu, I choose Add New, If I create a page, and I'm creating this page for, say, Mary Jane. Once you put in the title, you'll see that WordPress will momentarily kick out a slug. Okay, so this is where we want to make sure that the slug for this page is exactly a match to the username. So if Mary Jane's username is just Mary Jane, then that's without any space or dashes, and that's what we need that to be. So the slug would always match up with the username because that's where S2 member is going to redirect them to whenever they log in. Okay, now you can put here whatever you want to. Okay, you can type in, we'll just put in content filler, just as a temporary filler here. And you can do this in the visual editor. I just, I have it turned off for this instruction. Now over here is what we want to pay attention to. This little S2 member, we call this a meta box. And this is new in the latest release of S2 member. And this meta box allows you to set a, a page level restriction right here without having to go back to the S2 member general options panel all the time. So you can just say here, okay, this requires level zero access, meaning you just have to be logged in because level zero is, re is reserved for free subscribers. And if you're just going to not, if you're just letting people log in and out, you're not requiring payment, then that's what you would do. You just require level zero. Levels one, two, three, and four are all, are all associated with a payment. Okay, so you could require level one, but if you're just having, if you're just using S2 member for a client portal, then just set this to zero, because all you're saying here is that they just need to be logged in. They have to have an account, they need to be logged in. Now, this is where we're going to get specific. We're going to require a custom capability that is called Mary Jane. So that, again, is the username. So in other words, this, what we're going to do is we're going to protect this page from, from public access by requiring someone to be logged in and then we're going to additionally require access to this page going to require a customer or a user to have this specific custom capability which we will make unique by applying it by with the username okay so then I would publish this page now how do we how do we associate this custom capability 
Mary Jane that we're, that we're saying this page needs to be satisfied with. In other words, in order for someone to access this page now, they need to have not only a level zero access, an account, but they also need to have this custom capability. So how do we give Mary Jane that custom capability? Well, that's simple enough. All we do is when we create her account, if I go here to Users Add New, open this up in a separate tab, and we put in the new user for Mary Jane. Okay, we can put in Mary Jane's email address, all of her information here. And some of this additional, you can even put in a password. You can even have that password sent. And we want to just associate her with as a subscriber. Subscriber is at level zero. Okay? S2 member associates one, two, three, and four with paid levels. And level zero is just associated with a already existing role in WordPress called a subscriber, or a free subscriber as we refer to it. Okay? So you, I'm going to skip over some of the rest of this and just go right down to the custom capabilities box. And all I do is just paste that custom capability in. So now when I create Mary Jane's account, I've given her a username that matches up to the page or the post that I'm creating for her, which is that she's going to be redirected to upon logging in. And then I'm telling this, I'm telling S2 member to grant Mary Jane this custom capability, which we're also calling Mary Jane. Okay, so I just add that user in. And now, when Mary Jane logs in, she's going to be redirected to this new page that I created called Mary Jane. And only she will have access to it because only she will have that custom capability. So that's not, that's not too bad. Uh, it's not, it, it, this tumor was not originally designed for this, but if you're just setting up a client portal and you need to uh, arrange accounts where each different user has access to a special page where Mary Jane might have, you might put in here, hi Mary Jane. You can get very, very specific. You could put, you know, a link to a PDF like he's referring to, and then another link, and then maybe, a, you know, if it was for a school or something like that, you could put a graphic representing their school. You can do all sorts of things with this, uh, as long as you have someone to manage these accounts manually. Uh, now, another way you could do this is using the PayPal checkout buttons. If you were going to require paid access to this, uh, you can do it a little more automated. You can, whenever you create PayPal buttons, Open up the PayPal button generator here for S2 member. If I wanted to, if I wanted to restrict it to level one access and then have people sign up through PayPal, I would just put that custom capability, uh, custom capability into this field here, and then generate the PayPal button. And now, whenever you check out, S2 member will automatically give uh, Mary Jane or give that user that checked out that specific custom capability. Okay, and those custom capabilities can be switched out of your shortcode here in the CCAPS at attribute. Do you see right here it says CCAPS equals Mary Jane? So if you have a developer working with you or something, uh, someone that, that can uh, dynamically insert a value into the shortcode, then there's all sorts of creative ways that you could apply this uh, and, and possibly even automate some of it where you don't have to do everything. Uh, and that's also true for the free registration. A good developer can integrate uh, a more automated ways. Uh, S2 member has an API. You can look at the API scripting section here. Uh, and a developer could help you automate some of it further if you're planning on creating hundreds of accounts. Uh, if your client portal is going to be serving many, many people and you don't want to do all of it by hand. Uh, I recommend elance.com. Uh, you can post a project there for free and just to get, you know, give them what, you, what your uh, uh, requirements are and you just take in bids and then you can choose a developer to work with. There's a lot of people on elance.com that are familiar with WordPress and anyone familiar with WordPress roles and capabilities. Uh, and in, in, in some cases, they'll already be familiar with S2 members, so you might even want to include that in your description. Okay, so that is how you would set up a client portal, and I'm going to probably post this video in the forum for this particular user, and then I'll also post this on the website. Thanks for watching.